Longevity Agreements has is an initiative that Scottish Government have um, developed as part of 16 plus learning choices. It's to support the young people that are leaving school into negative destinations and it's to help progress them towards more formal further education, training and learning. It will also be there to support the wider MCMC young people that perhaps have tried some vocational training before or have lost their way or come from any of the high risk groups. Um, for example, they're perhaps they're homeless, they've had problems with drugs or alcohol, or maybe they're participating in offending behaviour. Youth Service um, for Stirling Council are delivering activity agreements on behalf of Stirling Council's MCMC partnership. We're using the trusted professionals, hopefully from across a variety of services within the local authority, um, voluntary organisations and other agencies that we work with, to support the young person um, that are participating in the activity agreements to create and develop their own personal programme. We're working really hard with a variety of training providers and other organisations to put training provision or, or activities in place that will engage with the young people. So, for example, we are working with Falkirk Training Solutions who will um, develop and expand their Kickstart programme within Stirling Council area, which is um, using physical activity and football in particular to engage with the young people, but around that we'll be building and developing um, a programme of motivational um, exercises and also focusing on things like their confidence, their team building and their literacies and employability skills. We're also working very closely with um, NHS Fourth Valley Street Sport. Street Sport is using volunteers and people from the local community to develop sport activities, sporting activities and taking them out into the communities within Stirling. What we'll also be doing as part of that though is educating them against things like offending behaviour, drugs and alcohol, and knife crimes, any type of um, activities that probably they would have normally participated in and we'll be giving them sort of diversionary tactics and showing them other ways to engage their time. At the moment, the young people, we're having a, we've got a variety of referrals made to us. Um, young people that perhaps have been engaged before and have participated eagerly within a vocational programme, but at the end of it, nothing has happened for them. They've not been able to move into employment or they've found employment and for some reason that employment hasn't worked out. Over the course of a couple of months, they've become demotivated, they've lost confidence, but they usually find that there are other issues there. Um, there are reasons why they haven't sustained their employment, so we will focus on identifying what these reasons are and looking at ways to move forward. For young people, perhaps, that are, are, another example is a young girl that is homeless at the moment and there are other personal issues that are preventing her from participating in mainstream programmes at the moment. So we're working very closely with her and with her social worker to identify um, the best way forward, but focusing very, very closely on her confidence and motivation and self-esteem. And that, that is what we're finding is a, a thread that's running through all the activity agreements is the confidence, the self-esteem and the motivation. The activity agreement, um, I think, benefits a lot of young people. Um, people that have just come out of school, don't have any qualifications, can go on the activity agreement, um, do um, some courses that they might want to do um, and kind of just build up their confidence, um, try and work towards getting into a full-time job or college or anything before going right into it. I suffer from depression and things like that, so hopefully just try and get my mental health back on track. Um, to, I'm going, hopefully going to get some experience with young people because that's what I want to do. Um, personal safety, um, just kind of some courses in that I'm going to go on. The other end of the spectrum is that we've got quite a high number of high offenders. Um, perhaps they've they're maybe been in custody um, and are obviously been released back into Stirling and are unsure of where to go next or they're falling back into the same routine that they did previously. The activity agreement, yes, we focus very much on what will help progress them towards more formal education, employment and training. Now that will be um, academic, um, it will be vocational, uh, but we will also include their interests. Um, so there will be, we will, they will be wanting to engage with us, but the biggest thing or the biggest difference it will be the trusted professional role 
The Trusted Professional role will be overseeing, working very, very closely with the young person, will be developing a relationship, but will also be working with the other agencies that the young person is engaging with and helping and supporting and ensuring that that young person is um, achieving their goals, is moving towards them, or as their goals or their needs change, is looking to um, refocus and to support the young person to identify alternative goals. An example um, of the type of young person that may be on an activity agreement is, um, for example, we've got a young man who has left school at Christmas and he just has no focus and no motivation. He's unsure where his skills and his abilities and his qualities lie. He's really very bright, but he just has zero confidence and therefore the activity agreements, what we'll do is we'll focus on setting goals for him that will increase his confidence and his motivation and then together with his trusted professional they'll focus on vocationally where he wants to go. What's he best at? What's he good at? What would he like to do? And therefore we can then try and find a vocational programme or training or even further education that might suit him. I have a young girl that is homeless. She um, is, has recently been put into her own accommodation um, she is confident, but only in scenarios and situations that she's comfortable in. When she's then asked to go and participate in something, for example, a training or uh, an into, into employment, she just goes to pieces and is unable to find her feet. Um, she, she doesn't have a good understanding of the boundaries between employer and employee, and therefore she hasn't been successful at sustaining anything previously. So the activity agreement for this young lady will be to focus more on what the expectations are for an employer, to focus more on her social skills, but also to, to, to help her to temper her confidence and look at it where, it's, where, it's, where it becomes more appropriate, basically. The activity agreement will be a personal programme, but it will be developed not only of the young person's interests but also of some of the activities they'll need to participate in that will move them towards more formal learning or education um, or training. For example, we could be focusing and help support them on their literacies, their numeracies. We will be looking at other ways that they could be, could be awarded accreditation. For example, the Duke of Edinburgh Awards, John Muir Trust Awards, um, using things like the Youth Achievement Awards to develop um, skills and accreditation they could put onto their CV that will make them competitive in the job market. We'll also be trying to engage them by including some interests for them, so we will therefore be looking to things like physical activities. There'll be opportunities for them to go on outward bound courses. They perhaps may be outward bound residential 24 hour courses. There'll be leisure activities. There'll be programmes developed with local providers where we will focus and use football as a, as a, a tool to engage with the young person, but we will also be looking to develop their employability skills and their confidence and motivation. We'll also be tackling some behavioural issues for young people, for example, their anger management, um, or perhaps even their social skills and their life skills. Overall, it will be a very comprehensive programme for any of the young people that are willing to, or want to participate. In terms of financial aspects for the young person, every young person that's eligible for an activity agreement may also be eligible to apply for an education maintenance allowance. My favourite thing about my job is being able to go out and meet everybody and to know that the work that I'm doing is going to actually achieve something at the end. I'm going to be able to support these young people.